Hey, Journey in the Bible family. I'm excited today to be continuing with our journey in the Bible. This is a show that time travels, literal time travel into the Bible, past, present, and future, so that we can be encouraged, so that we can be inspired, so that we can be converted, because the Word of God is given for all these reasons. And so, if you're excited like I am, get your Bibles and let the journey begin. As our tradition has been a journey in the Bible, we never journey alone. And so that's why I'm excited today to be joined by a special guest. His name is Igor from Ottawa. So help me welcome Igor as he joins us tonight. Hi, Brother Igor. How are you doing today? Hey, tonight. Brother. Hey, Brother James. It's a blessing to be here on Johnny in the Bible. Mm. And yeah, I don't come alone. Right. I come with a sword like every man who's going to battle. Right, to battle, and, right? Yeah, I know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm. So yeah, that's how I always come prepared with the Word of God. Praise God. That's so yeah. true. Thank you so much for being here. Now, tell us a little bit about um, about where exactly are you joining us from in Ottawa? Uh, so, uh, I live in Ottawa, in the west ends of Ottawa, mm. uh, in a small city called Burrhaven. It's like a couple of 20 minutes from downtown Ottawa. It's a very, it's a very chilly place, you know, quiet, mm. a family place. And I just love to be there and you know, to reside there. It's amazing. That's so good. What's the lowest level of temperature you guys have? Because I, I, I'm always afraid of those places. Ottawa Talking about right now or just the whole season in the winter? Like winter, the scariest winter you've got. Um, to be honest, so far, the, the, like, the winter in 2019 was bad because right now it's in November. Yeah. And I'm looking at my, my memories for the last two years. Oh my goodness, mm. it, was, it was already snowing and so bad. Right. But now it's still, today was up to 11 which is really amazing yeah. so it actually gets very scary in the winter but we're just grateful that this year is different like praise god yeah for global warming <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to say that i don't want to say that <laughs> no right <laughs> i don't want to say that but i mean yeah well now tell us about your roots where are you originally from <clears throat> so personally um i'm from rwanda and mm. I was born and raised in Rwanda, in the northern ends of Rwanda, um, the northern part of Rwanda. It's a very uh, place that is a very good place that is full of mountains. We have like a mm. couple mountains there. It's it's very cold. It's one of the few places that you can find gorillas there. Ah, oh, nice. And it's a little bit cold compared to the other parts of Rwanda. Mm. But you know, once you come to Canada, you go to the real <laughs> cold issues, you know. So, right. That's yeah. amazing. Well, praise God. And um, I understand you, you speak uh, la, uh, English and what, which other language do you speak? I speak in your Rwanda, so I think that's my first language. Not like I think it's my first language <laughs> in Rwanda. And right. yeah, my second language is English, so I'm not like very fluent in it. Praise God for that. Uh, maybe yeah. teach, teach one thing to our audience. Um, how do you say... Um, journey in the bible how would you translate that in in Kenya, rwanda if you were to say that oh uh, <laughs> i said Kenya, rwanda was my first language <laughs> so mm. so i would say um, i would think that sorry for my fellow rwandese who are gonna hear this <laughs> but journey in the bible um, so i think that's the right way to say it. awesome yeah well, thank you for joining us on Urujendo Gomuri Bibiria. And I'm happy that we are able to do this by God's grace. Yeah. Uh, one more question before we dive in. Yeah. <clears throat> what is your favorite verse and why? To be honest, there's one verse that came in my mind. It was like, uh, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light mm. onto my path, right? Yeah. But I just remember, Igor, you just thought about that verse. It's not your favorite <laughs> verse, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I feel like it was highlighted to me for some reasons because mm. actually my favorite verse is john 15 verse 5 it says abide in me and i in you you will bear much fruit so yes. we, and that was talking about jesus like mm -hmm. if we abide in jesus 
who will bear much fruit. And the same, the same book of John, it starts with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the yeah. Word was God Himself, right? Mm-hmm. So when I when I read when I also tried to compare with the verse that I that came in my mind my first time like the word is a lamp to my feet, mm-hmm. so it actually directed me that Jesus is the light, and it was being said in the book of Psalm hundreds of years ago, right? So even though I said a lot of verses, but John fifteen verse five that's my favorite verse, being able to abide in the word which is the light of the world. Amazing. Oh, praise God. You know, yeah. that's the thing about Jesus. There needs to be yeah. that constant communion, right? So that's 100%. amazing. So what chapter are we doing today? Tough, man. We're reading, uh, we're going to be discussing and going through uh, Genesis 46. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, get your Bibles and let us begin the journey. So in the previous chapter, Genesis chapter 45, make sure you watch that one i did that video with um, a friend of mine uh from from uganda which is a country close to rwanda so we 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 going through that territory as we journey in the bible we're also journeying in africa a little bit so you get familiar with uh, different places but anyways we spoke about joseph making himself known to his brothers He tells them, I am Joseph, your brother. And the brothers had to go back and tell the good news to the old man, Jacob. And, you know, Jacob at first did not believe it. But when he saw the convoy coming or the the chariots, he was like, it is enough. Joseph is alive. Let's go to Egypt, right? And so in this chapter, though, things are kind of different. Before before Jacob leaves Canaan to Egypt, he does something that's very important. He goes to a particular place. The place is called Beersheba. You go, can you help us here? Why does Jacob go to Beersheba? Um, I'm thinking of a lot of things. And as mm-hmm. I, I joined through that, that chapter and started reading those verses, yeah. I always like to see the context and the history of the these these words and the mm. the, the word Bershiba, you know it's a very wonderful word and you know it was the same place that um that um that, that abraham met this mm. high priest called Melchizedek. i think you died in like in that place yeah. like a long time ago like maybe yes <laughs> a long time ago and we know there's that a video called after the order of Melchizedek. after the i'll order link of it up me. i'll link it up here as well yes sir make sure you do very has to be very interesting and you know so mark is a very he's a very powerful important figure because he comes out of nowhere we don't see his 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 birth or his story he just comes there you know Mm -hmm. he's a king you know he's uh he's also a a priest right you know he has all these powerful positions that you know we can only refer to only other person who has them and that is jesus christ and you know as yeah. we're joining the bible we have to see jesus in every context right yes. and we see uh his um his his forefather abraham mm-hmm. making a north in the mm. same place and calling it Beersheba, you know mm. and we see that actually jo- uh, jacob was going to leave his promised land the land that he was given to him by his fathers and that's yeah. where and that's one of the places where you know he made a north there so i think it was it was it was important and he felt the urgency of doing the same thing knowing that you know that he was going to leave the land that was promised for his fathers mm. amazing so so he goes there because obviously this place has you know spiritual significance abraham you know spoke with god there and mm-hmm. really he wants to talk with god and make sure that before he begins his journey he should mm-hmm. have a conversation with god which is something that is amazing so the bible says that god spoke to jacob through a dream right Mm -hmm. how does god speak to us today uh i I wouldn't just be quick to answer how does god speak to us today Mm. because god is the same today i know it says Mm. god is the same yesterday today and forever right Mm -hmm. Uh, even though you know god speaks to people differently because of the environment and all that Mm. But I do believe it's a very significant thing that actually God has been speaking to people in dreams for a very long time. Yeah. We can look at the life of Daniel, 
mm-hmm. can look at John being a John, John the Revelator, yeah. having all these dreams and visions and God talking through him. Mm-hmm. Also, importantly, for women out here, you know, this is a good point of view to share. There's yeah. someone called Ellen G. White, you know, he's, mm. she's considered as some of, you know, like the reformers or, you know, founders of the Seven Day Adventist Church. You can look at, you can look out that and I'll maybe share mm-hmm. the link through this video. Yeah. You know, she, she claimed that she used to have visions from God and, mm. you know, she had multiple visions and doctors were able to testify that and the dreams she used to have. Mm. And ha- she herself writes these dreams and visions that she has, right? And just few amazing tips and facts, you know, Ellen G. White, she's the most translated female non-fiction author wow. in in um in the whole world, you know? Oh, and amazing. her book, Steps to Christ, has been transformed, uh, sorry, translated to almost 140 languages. Mm. And also she's the most male and female translated author in the u.s wow. you know so just something that showing that there and for you to guys to see that so answering back to the question answering my brother's question mm. you know above all things we have an advocate and the intercessor our high priest you know yes. having all these positions and that is jesus christ and mm. he tells us that as he was going to leave his disciples and and mm-hmm. as he was going to go out of this world that he's not going to leave us as offerings but he's going mm. to give us the holy spirit who, mm. he, who will lead us on to all the knowledge of truth right mm-hmm. and it's very significant the holy spirit because the holy spirit dwells in our in our hearts in our bodies you know mm. and that's why as a christian i do believe that we should be careful with what we eat what we mm. drink because yeah. god talks to us through the holy spirit who he gives in our bodies right yeah so, if you're not taking care of your body, don't claim that God is not taking care of you, talking to you, because mm. you have to take care of God's temple where the Holy Spirit dwells in and will be able to talk to you. So, yeah. Wow, powerful. Because God needs yeah. a clear mind, right? 100%. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing points. So, uh, Beersheba then, what is the spiritual significance of Beersheba? So like like we talked like we talked before we touched a little bit on it right mm-hmm. so Beersheba itself means a place of arts right mm. you know a place of arts a place where you you know you can where God had promised his forefathers you know that he will be, he will give them a land you know there was right. a significance of it so I do believe he himself knew what God had promised him that he was going to dwell in this land like for you know, for all and his descendants. So mm. I do believe that um, the word Beersheba, you know, I- identifies like, you know, how God is not like, you know, slow regarding to keeping his promises. So does the name, the name of the place tells us a lot of, a lot of it, a lot of things mm. about it. Wow, I love that. So a place yeah. of oaths, it's, that sounds like a place of promise, a place of commitment in your, where you have to make decisions as well for God. So yeah. that that's something really that's um, relevant to our time because there are times where we need to, you know, make an oath to God, you know, make promises to God or just also like uh, remember his promises. Now, I'm not too sure. Maybe you might correct me. Yeah. But um, when 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 Abraham has a vision and yeah. and God tells him that, you know, he he. I think he was giving sacrifices and and uh, eagles were coming and taking the sacrifices away and God tells him the meaning of the dream that his descendants will be uh, slaves in Egypt for 400 years and then after that they will come back. Mm. Was it was it at the same place, uh, Beersheba? I'm not sure. That's a very tricky question. <laughs> and if you have an answer for that, please share that. Well, I'm, I'm asking because I don't. <laughs> because um, I don't have the answer. I'll, 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 I'll say pretty much like him being there or not there will not be the significance of the, the real story because, you mm. know, that was a very important thing, you know, God being able to share those certain details and being able to reveal them to his, to his, um, to his, to his, to his, you know, to his, to his servant, um, Abraham tells a lot of how Jesus also operates, you know. He says, I've never done anything in secret. 
and mm-hmm. everything that I do, I tell it before it happens that you know, you know that I don't keep any secrets, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, I just find that very important that you know, uh, before we begin anything, before we take like um, yeah. a big journey step in our lives, we need to consult God. Yeah. And, and that's what Jacob is doing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he knows for sure Joseph is alive, but he wants he wants to get uh, you know an okay from God, and I think that's something that's powerful. And we see this repeated with different Bible characters. True that. To always make sure God okay's what you're doing, the journey you're taking, the decisions you're making. So I think that's something profound we can learn from Jacob. Mm-hmm. Now um, God tells Jacob to fear not. Mm-hmm. What does that tell us about Jacob? <laughs> I mean, we can be quick to say that Jacob is a very fearful man. I mean, why would you <laughs> die when you have God on your side? And right. but just showing an amazing fact to the word or the statement "fear not" or mm-hmm. you know, in a similar perspective, it's written in the Bible more than or oh, nearly three sixty five times and. Wow. Funny, funny story. That's as much as time as, as much as days that we have in a year. So like, Ooh. we have a verse to tell ourselves, "Fear not every single day." No kidding. And I do believe there is a significance <laughs> why Jesus chose chooses that and has highlighted that so many times. And we see him mm. telling his disciples, "Fear not, fear not." Oh, why are you fearful? You of little faith. Ooh. You know. And there is many times that Jesus is referencing to this, and not just to Jacob, but mm. I would say, what does your question, which is amazing, what does this tell us about Jacob? It tells yeah. us that Jacob is human, mm. and he was living in a, a period that we are living right now, like we are living right now too. He lived, and he was a, a real character, you know, yeah, because he was fearful, you know, yeah. But God actually. Just, he reveals himself here. So what it actually tells us about Jacob is that he's human. Yeah. And he also can have fear when God is there to protect him. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, indeed. Jacob is human. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. You say 365 times is the amount of time we have fear not. <laughs> that's, that's something, right? Yeah. I, I wonder though, I wonder why that is like, yeah. Um, I think God, God does not, God does not want us to be afraid, mm-hmm. because every time He approaches a character, mm-hmm. He tells them, "Do not be afraid." Every single yeah. time, mm-hmm. and and connected with that is also the other reality that we are prone to fear, mm-hmm. and I guess that's the nature of man. So God was- is like, "Don't be afraid." I would say that's not the nature of man, but that would be the nature of sin. You mm, know, sin, sinful man. <laughs> sinful man, because before when God made Adam and Eve, yeah. not in a sinful nature, in a perfect God mm. character nature, right. they saw Jesus, they saw the presence of God every single day, and they were happy to be in his presence. And God used to walk with them, he used to come in a garden. And yeah. they, they used to spend time, I, I believe, like God said, that he rested with them on the Sabbath, on the seventh day. So he surely mm. spent quality time with them every single day and rested with them. But the first time he comes to see them when they had sinned, mm. and they are afraid. Wow, the that's first, the king of fear. Yeah, the first word things to cover themselves, they, they, they will see that they are naked because the light that was covering them is out, you know. And... Now they're afraid to see Jesus, to see God, and they ask. They and then God asks them, "Where are you?" Mm. And they are afraid. And I believe that's one of the reasons that we are also filled with, you know, in our, in, the, in these latter days, it's because yeah. that the sinful nature has taken away that um, light and presence of God. And just God tells us, "Do not be afraid, because yeah. I come to restore you and give that which Adam and Eve lost." which is wow. being in my presence and having that peaceful nature in it. Amazing. Well, praise yeah. God. Praise God. Yeah. Perfect love casts away fear. Right? Amen. That's, Wonderful. that's beautiful. 
Yeah. Like we, are, we are so afraid, man. Oh. Very afraid. But God, God is assuring us that if we if we trust Him, there's no need yeah. to be afraid. So that's a powerful promise. Yeah. 365. <laughs> no kidding. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> So God promises to be with Jacob in all his journey of his mm. life and his posterity, those who will come from him. Mm. Do we have a similar promise we can claim in the Bible? Well, we just looked at 365. What's the, the most powerful <laughs> one that you, that you want? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I would also tell you the same things. Yeah. We always have to be careful because I'm telling you, the God of, the God of Jacob is still the same God that we serve today. Right. Our God never changes, and He doesn't break His promises, and we know that's a valid thing, right? Yeah. And also, Paul, one of the you know Jews by the flesh, who was also transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ, He tells mm-hmm. us these new perspectives and point of views that we need to see, right? You know, mm-hmm. we are all spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, uh, Abraham's um, descendants. You know, we are all Abraham's seed by faith, right? And yes. He calls us spiritual Jews and spiritual. Israel, right? Yeah. So yeah. we know Jacob changed, was changed. His name was changed to Israel, right? Mm. And I do believe we are part of Israel. Those who we unite in Christ, right? Through Those faith, Christ. right? Yes. So I do believe the same promise that God gave Jacob. That same time, He still gives it to us same way right now, you know. And He has actually way more promises. Because like we said, we're in different battles and right now we're in the nearly the last battle, you know, these small battles, you know, there's a certain move being being prepared, yeah. but this final battle, you know you gotta get everything you need to get your mind straight. So we, mm-hmm. we have the best um the best um, armors, the best instructions because the, also the battle we're going to face it's it's not gonna be easy. That's right. why I do believe that um there's many promises that actually God gives to us and we can claim. One I can help, mm. one I can help you share with you guys is um, Psalms 32 verse 8. It says, mm. I will instruct you and mm. teach you in the way you should go. I will guide yes. you with my eye, right? Mm. He will guide us with his own eyes and he will instruct us and teach us in any way that we should take, right? Either wow. you be, uh, and people, because Sometimes my friends, I just love talking about it. It's like, oh, man, you should be a pastor. <laughs> and I'm like, pastors are not, they should not be the only ones to talk about the word of God, man. Like, right. It should, be should. Our, it should be our our normal routine, you know. As we yeah. are working, let's just meditate on the word of God. Because it says in any way or anything we do, we should, you know, like give glory to God. And right. this is something that we need to learn because God has been taken away from the school systems from yeah. the judicial systems and mm. he is restoring us right now to just um, so i would say yeah i would say there's many promises that god mm. god promises to us and we need to claim it to um to see him working in our lives too yeah amen yeah. amen to that i mean the yeah. whole bible really is a promise right every 100%, part of it every 100 yeah and uh and we also told that in him speaking of christ jesus yeah. All promises are yea and amen. And Ooh. and the one who gave his only begotten son, how will he not with him give us all things that we need? So mm. like, the, the promise is so powerful and so, so overwhelming at, at times. But we just have to receive it by faith. Uh, also, as you were sharing that, something mm. really came to my mind. I've been wondering who am I gonna share this with? Two eighteen. Yeah, Hebrews eighteen says, um, "For in that in himself has suffered, has suffered, mm. being tempted, he's able to aid those who are tempted." Right. So yep. This actually motivated me that knowing that Jesus actually understands how I'm feeling, he understands mm. what I'm going through. You know. Yeah. And one of the wonderful like promise I I, I really believe that is like. I'm able to aid you every little time you're tempted. Because right. you know what? I do understand what it feels like yeah. to be taken away in this fleshly desire, thinking that mm. you don't have control over yourself. But mm. guess what? I've been there. <laughs> and once you put your trust in me, I can help you 
overcome. Amen. Amen to that. Wow. The Bible. The Bible. Let's journey. Let's journey. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, here's a tough one for you. Oh. Verse 30. And Israel said unto Joseph, mm. Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. And Luke chapter 2, verse 29, which says, Yeah. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word this is simeon i believe after yeah. he had seen jesus mm -hmm. as a baby he tells god you know let me just let me depart in peace <laughs> are these two verses similar my are brother, they related in any way <laughs> my brother you have to be a bible scholar to try to find the really significance of those two verses because mm. i do believe that they're similar and that is literally the whole bible in full you know mm. we can actually learn things from the other parts of the bible and see it in the same um in the same messages being shared in just different time periods you know that's yeah. how powerful the bible is but i'm just gonna say the context of these two places sure. And I can lay the similarity, you know. So we look at we look at we look at Genesis forty six thirty, you know, why why does um why does um Jacob sees say these words after he's he has met Joseph? I can I can try to imagine me being Jacob. So I'm not a father, so it's uh, it's hard, but to our fellow <laughs> parents that are watching this, imagine having a having a child whom you love so much, very obedient very uh, very smart they're very honest you know they're like mm. perfect in all they do yeah. and someone just on one day your brother do your little sons come and tell you our son is gone he's he's been killed and wow. you weep and you know how much you love this son and you know you're never gonna see him again yeah. and now you hear some good news that your son is still alive yeah and the only thing you can do you can't just wait right, right you can't just wait to see him you know mm. you can't you can just you can't just you can't just wait to just embrace him you, you feel like there's nothing nothing feels better than this right yes and i feel like after jacob saw him i was like i mean at this point there's nothing nothing i wish to have in life and also going mm. to to the book of luke 2 29 you know, yeah. Simon was a very, it says was a man of God. He served God and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, you mm -hmm. know. And God had promised him that before he dies, he was mm -hmm. able to see the Messiah. So the Messiah in the, in the, or the life of Hebrews, you know, mm -hmm. was the, the, the person who was going to take them out of bondage, mm -hmm. you know. It was the sinful bondage which Jesus was able to to uh, to break by his blood and his sacrifice wow. as the big as the biggest sacrifice, you know, the lamb mm -hmm. without blemish, right? Yes. And him being filled by the Holy Spirit, he knew when he saw his eyes that this is the Son of God, whom mm -hmm. he had promised to see before he dies. You know, right. Right. I don't, I really don't think that to imagine that that person was young, even though he would still be young. But I would imagine in his heart saying that there's nothing better than seeing the Son of God, God in flesh, being able to see God eyes to eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, as somebody who has made Jesus at a certain point in his life, <laughs> knowing that he used to crucify Christ by his actions, living in a sinful nature. Yeah, yeah. That moment you meet Jesus, nothing feels better than that. Wow. Nothing feels better than that. Ooh. And I feel like those two verses and those two point of views, they're trying to highlight that and trying to show that because, you know, I would go ahead and just say how Joseph is a type of Christ. Mm. Look at him being sold by pieces of silver. You know, yeah. Joseph was sold by pieces of silver. Um, Jesus was also sold <laughs> for <laughs> pieces of silver. You know, mm. if you look at their lives, there's a lot of similarities and... Um, mm. And I, be, I do believe there is a very, very 
high significance and similarity there yes yes wow praise god very similar you know the word is related right yeah 100% indeed indeed i also see a similarity as well um and my mind goes for or oh, to to what you just mentioned here the 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 fact that joseph is a type of jesus christ and so when jacob saw joseph it was like this is all i need right of sin it's like it's like it's like he's repeating what he had said um when he wrestled with god i have seen the face of god and didn't die right so he 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 says i have seen thy face you are still alive it's enough right and simeon says the same thing so i i think it's just a confirmation that um this thing we are doing of joseph being a type of jesus christ is not made up it's actually in the bible and everything that joseph goes through he's actually representing what jesus christ would do and eventually joseph saves his people from hunger from you know famine and jesus saves us as well from our sin so that's something that's very relevant now as we close joseph kept keeps being um consistent and insistent that his family should stay in goshen why do you think that is um i would say he really wants to be close with his family cuz he can be able to provide for them if he right. is close to them right right it's so hard to provide to people when you're not close to them right Mm. I would say the same thing to Jesus. Jesus, it's hard for him to provide to you if you're not mm. really walking with him, right? If you mm. want him to take away the hunger, the trust issues, the pain, the sorrow, mm. you have to be close to him. Cuz the mm. place he was staying was far from them. And actually mm. Jacob says this hunger was going to go for a more um, a certain period like still 5 years waiting to, to you guys to see how this famine is going to be hard for me to provide for you mm. as we are passing through these days right now it's really hard to survive without Jesus on our side so right. if we really want these problems in our life to you know to be taken care of we need to walk with Jesus and be close to him and not be yes. Christians of a certain day of worshiping and just other days far from him we mm. walk with him day by day we each passing moment yeah mm. Amen. Amen. And I want to just, you know, add something to that as well. Yeah. That it's it's not what is what is close to God exactly? What does it mean to be close to Jesus? Is it is it a matter of distance? Because if if it's a matter of distance, then what would one would claim that our whole argument has failed because Jesus is let's say a thousand of light years if not billions of light years away from us right yeah so what does close to jesus really mean i think i think close to jesus means being where he wants you to be mm. where he has told you to be mm. where he can connect with you because mm. we know we only connect with god through the person of the holy spirit because jesus mm. is interceding for us in heaven Mm. And I'm bringing that up because I'm looking at the map here of Egypt. I hope I have the right one. Yeah. <laughs> and and Goshen is like this isolated place almost towards the end of the of the of the like towards the peripherals of the country. And I wonder what why 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 did God choose specifically not God but Joseph? Well, he could be God also in some sense. <laughs> but Why does he why is he insistent that they stay in in Goshen because he repeats this more than many, many times and it comes up in the next chapter. I think we we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more in the next chapter. Genesis chapter 47. But for now I think I think it's enough to say that even Jesus Christ wants us to be in a particular place. Mm. And at a particular time even. Mm. And our life during this famine during this time of spiritual starvation mm. depends on us being in the right place where god would connect with us where god would feed us where we have 
full Wi-Fi connection, if you will. <laughs> so with those yeah. words, I think we conclude our journey. I hope you guys enjoyed the ride. <laughs> and uh, please join us as we continue our journey for the next episode in Genesis chapter 47. If you have any questions, answers, complaints, you can put that in the comments. <laughs> and I'll uh, see you in the next episode.